So what I'm going to do now in a short amount of time, I'm going to address the split. I'm going to map out the total system because now South Africa is in a major transformation once again. So the title here is Back to the Future. South Africa reinvents itself for the 21st century. Be they economic, be they healthcare, be they political, because of the splits. Of course, we find these in the first, second, third world, in certainly the pre-modern, modern, postmodern, post -modern, and now integral South Africa, that microcosm of the planet has a rare opportunity to shape the entire f future of our species. Why? Because all the value systems in similar ratios exist here, south of the Limpopo River. Spoke recently in Washington, often in Washington, and at the United Nations once again, pointing out a clash and you see these little color dots here, and these little color dots correspond to these. Not a Shakwa Zulu thing, not a New Age nonsense, but simply a communication device in terms of a color code that represents a very complex human value system. Now, this, this technology is based on decades of scientific, academic, research and field testing all over the world. So that's, that's what I'm about here, to shift the value systems from their clash to their congruence. Now, this is only a theory. It is a very complex theory because it has to deal with the emergence of billions of people. And my job now is to very quickly suggest what might be done. I'm very fond of Buckminster Fuller. You can never change things by fighting existing reality to change something. Build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. So these are very quickly 12 postulates. I'm going through these quickly. First is to reframe globalization issues around value systems rather than stereotypes. When I say value systems, I mean that. So rather than Zulu, what kind of Zulu? Zulu purple, the tribe, Zulu red, Chaka, Zulu blue, Inkata, Zulu in incorporated the political entity, which Zulu? And so I'm speaking about value structures here. I'm not speaking about types, okay? So these are the core value systems, levels of psychological development, levels of consciousness emergence. I don't have the first one on this list, the beige, which is the survivalistic, but you recognize very well the, the tribal animistic. See the intrinsic value within this purple culture because it's awesome and it has the warmth, the Ubuntu. I can't say it like Tutu says it. And then we have the third level system here, it's, it's the second egocentric warlords. I've worked with U.S. Army Special Forces and dealing in Afghanistan because it's full of red, egocentric warlords who plunder and pillage the country. And that particular mindset has been big in Africa, controlled by what's called the big men of Africa. Is it innate in Africa? No. None of these are. They are developmental. They're evolutionary steps and stages. They're not types of people, they're systems in people. So as these value systems emerge, they have an impact because they shape what's on the surface level. So in the orange fifth level, here we have the business mentality, strategic thinking, meritocracies, profit driven, and part of your mission will be to take that package to Africa because that's a very important learning that's got to happen in Africa. 
It's about value systems. It's not about ethnicity or religion. So the issues here were never about race, like the issues up north are not about religion. Those are manifestations. Those are not the core intelligences. Have I mentioned about vital signs monitors? I haven't. <laughs> And SDI culture scan is, is one of the research technologies that, that Christopher invented. So we scan organizations so we can see differences in their core value DNAs. Focus on the future as more significant than the past in shaping the present. When I was working here for years, I used to come to, to your futures group here in Stellenbosch. And I would meet them as a World of Future Society wherever they were meeting. So I was very up to date with the, the future initiative. I don't know if that's still alive and well, but it needs to be. But now they need new tools. Search for the new intelligences that appear around chaos and within crucible. Even the years I was coming early, and I wrote about this in, in the book Crucible, with all kinds of illustrations in, in uh, changing water from salt, salt water to clean it up with all kinds of innovations coming out of South Africans. Identify superordinate goals that transcend other priorities and agendas. A superordinate goal is a goal of value that everyone needs to achieve that no one can do it unilaterally. What are some in South Africa? Well, we can start with water, can't we? The fear of diseases, the fear of violence, and I'm sure that there are many others that overarch the whole society. And you keep, you keep referring to them. And you have teams of people that monitor that. Facilitate and honor the inevitable steps, stages, ways in human existence. You literally understand how cultures emerge and you facilitate this and you unblock it and you know when an older system is wearing out and it has the old wine skins but you've got the new wine so you're up here monitoring opening and closing repairing when necessary the dams and locks of emergence. So these, these are the codes, once again, beige, survival, clans, biological impulses, making through the day, making through the night. Second code, pur now purple has no meaning, just a symbol. Spirits, magic, myth, bloodlines, rites of passage, bonds, and rituals. Blue, truths, Causes, classes, tradition, pageantry, flags, hymns, crusades. These are adaptive intelligences to unique life conditions. Seven, utilize all of the resources. So here we have economic policy, education policy, NGO activities, environmental, law enforcement, political games, community. Each one has a program that reflects a value system code. So we do a lot on the HIV problem, and I can show you a major document that we've prepared based on value systems. If you have women under the power of the purple mimetic who breed large families as their social security, you have males under the power of the red egocentric predatory system they impregnate as many women as they can without keeping score. Then you put in the wild card of AIDS. You got trouble, my friends. Now, it's not about black. It's not about African. It's about purple red. Part of our problem is we tend to speak out of our own priorities. We mirror manage. We talk to people in the way that we ourselves want to be talked to. P8 contained destructive conflicts while respecting the essential cycles of change, 
This goes into a much longer presentation of how it is that radicalization appears in the wings, us versus them, and the mid-range begins to disappear. Nine, promote power differentiation through the appropriate stratified stages and levels. And here's what's called stratified democracy. Different versions of democracy at different levels of psychological emergence. Someone says, we want democracy. Give me an operational definition of that. What kind of democracy? Resolve major paradoxes by implementing creative win-win solutions. Look who loses. This is the sequence. The major fit. We have these problems here and we have constructed these responses here. So there's a fit until this way begins to produce new problems here represented by those contours. And when that happens, you move to the beta condition. Something's wrong. Companies begin to lose key people. They lose market share. It's how we respond to that becomes the issue. The first of which is do more of the same. Sharpen that, jam that in, give more money to training. Because we think we're still dealing with that world when we are not, we're dealing with 21st century. Then a third is the possibility of an evolutionary change. The key is when you work with a company, the reason they need a vital signs monitor is they need to stay ahead of the game. If that path isn't taken, the danger is a revolutionary change, what's called the gamma trap. Here's where we know what we want, we know what we don't want, we can't get there. There are barriers. Here's where you have terrorism, here's where you have violence, and you need to get ready for more of it. Gamma trap. You need to release that energy. And then it's the delta surge. Free at last, free at last. Then back to the new alpha. That's the, that's the U sequence. Integrate and embellish the body, mind, soul, spirit in enriching the human experience. And then nourish and replenish the natural habitat so all life forms may flourish. So here is what I showed Mandela. Here's the Alpha Connor, 1652, came in with the gun and the Bible. And then 1948, well, they made a deal with the British. The British can run the economy, but the Alpha Connors will run the country's government with elaborate affirmative action programs and they built the schools and the highways and the universities, an amazing process. As Afrikaners lifted up from poor European class into a very complex, even a nuclear society. And then when I started coming here, it was right in here. Shift in production-driven thinking in the gold mines and coal and elsewhere into the fifth level achievement, marketing, and a major shift occurred in Afrikaner executives. By the time Mandela appeared, I showed here him the green thinking Afrikaners. So I helped him understand the emergence of the Afrikaner, and that process continues now. So. No more prizes for forecasting the rain, only prizes for building the ark. Ah. Stitching together our wounded world. Thank you very much.